out this bay window. Um, I'm going to picture frame it. I'm going to actually cut the pieces off first. I've got my joiner and biscuit set up outside. Once everything's cut, I use my joiner, put in my glue and my biscuits, make one solid piece, and then I'll nail it on. So the first thing you're going to do is measure my sides. Now what you want to do is measure from the top of the sill to the bottom of that sill. So that's 36 and 7 eighths. Now I always like to have a 3 16 reveal on the bottom and the top. So I'm going to add 3 16 to that. So my actual cut is going to be 37 and a quarter. And I'm going to check this side just to make sure that both sides are equal. Same thing. This is 36 and 7 eighths. So 3 16 and 3 16 is 3 eighths. So we're at 37 and a quarter. So my two side cuts will be 37 and a quarter. Now I'm going to measure the bottom. Again, right to the stop and to this stop. We're at 75 and a quarter. If you add 3 eighths to that, that's 75 and 5 eighths. So that'll be the bottom and the top. And again, my point for the 3 eighths was to add 3 sixteenths inch reveal on both sides, top and bottom as well. So I'm going to cut the two side pieces now. They're both 37 and a quarter from the inside. So what I want to do is first put a miter on one end of the board. That's at 45. Right about there. Slide this piece. And a trick that I use is it's tough to actually hook your tape on the corner of this because it'll keep falling off. So what I do is I put this right on the edge of my table. And then I actually hook my tape to the edge of my table. And I'll measure in 37 and a quarter. Turn the table saw to 45. There, push down, keep it locked. All right, so that's my first piece, first side piece. Do the same thing with the other side. Now, I'm just going to clean this cut up. I'm just going to do a quick little clean on it, and then I'm going to flip it over and use this for the other side. slide this to the end of my table. Looks good right there. And again my number is 37 and a quarter to the inside. It's very important when you're doing any kind of finished trim work like this to have a high tooth blade. Um, this is a 12 inch blade. It's got the 80 teeth on it. So it's a nice smooth cut. I'm not going to have any jagged uh, so there's my right there. Just line it up and cut it. Okay, so this is my second piece, and this will be the side pieces. Now I'm going to cut my top and bottom pieces. That number was 75 and 5 eighths to the, the inside. So again, get your 45. Slide this down to the end of the table. Perfect. Hook the table.
table that measures your 75 and 5 eighths. Since you put a lot of work in making this wood have this rustic look and everything, make sure you measure twice, cut once. All right, so this is my joiner right here. Just quickly going over it. Um, I don't know if you can see this number right here. It's, it's the number 10. Depending on what size biscuits you're using, you could turn this. You got zero, max, and there's also a number for 20 and for small. So I've got size number 10 biscuits. All right, so I got this set on number 10. And that's more the depth of, of the cut. Now, this side, this is the angle of the plate. If you release this, you can slide the plate up or down, depending on, you know, what kind of trim you're doing or woodwork. Now, this plate right here is actually three quarters of an inch, okay? If you release this level right here, you can adjust this knob and make this plate go up or down, and that'll determine where the cut in the wood actually is. So for this particular application, I've got a three-quarter ply, so it actually fits right there, and that red line is right in the middle, so I'm perfect. All right, so that's where it's set right now, and that'll put a nice plunge cut directly in the middle of that wood. So what I always recommend is to take a piece of scrap that you are using and just do a quick plunge cut just to make sure that the depth is what you want. So for this piece for instance, I'm going to turn it on. So as you can see here, that's pretty much perfectly directly in the middle of this piece of wood. Now you want to make sure that doesn't move because all of your um, joints and miters are, have to be at the same exact height so they all fit perfectly. So generally after that you put some glue in there. Put your glue, you put in the biscuit, and then you can connect your two pieces once that's done. You need to understand this, this 1x4 is, well I cut it down, this is 3 and 3 quarters. That's the midpoint. When you cut a miter on something, you're obviously gonna have a much larger number here. So this cut is about five and a quarter. All right, so the midpoint of that is gonna be two and five eighths. So what you need to do is put a mark on two and five eighths. Take your square, line that up that's your cut. You can always just verify that. Yep, two and five eighths, two and five eighths. Now the reason I do that mark, because if you look at this joiner right here, there's actually a little view hole right there. And this is the direct middle of the joiner. So you wanna have that pencil mark directly inside there. So it looks like this. All right, so you line that up in there. And then as you do your plunge cut, it's gonna be perfectly in the middle of that piece of trim. All right, so I have four pieces of trim here. Obviously, I have to do two cuts on each piece, so that's eight total cuts. So as I stated before, flip this upside down, and the midpoint of your miter is two and five eighths. So just make a mark on two and five eighths. Okay. Grab your square, line that up, and make your mark. Okay, and that's going to be your cut. I really want to secure it. This is a large enough piece where the weight kind of holds it down. But again, I want my viewfinder to line up directly with this pencil mark. All right, turn the machine on. Line it up. And make it punch cut. repeat this seven more times. So flip the board over. Okay, so we got our two pieces here. Um, I got my plunge cuts in both. All right, so the first thing you want to do is put some glue inside the plunge cut. Okay, and then you also want some glue on both sides of the face of your cut here as well. Not too much, you don't want it to bleed out. So 
kind of feel like that. This is the side piece, same thing. Inside the plunge cut. And on the face. Okay. You take your biscuit, put your biscuit in there. Now, I used to have Hartford clamps. If you don't know what they are, look them up. Um, they're actually made the next town over from where I live in Hartford, Connecticut. And they were basically a cast iron clamp that you would put right on the miter, lock it in place, and it worked beautifully for something like this so the glue could set. But I had four of them. They were stolen, and they're about 80 or 90 bucks each right now. So I'm going to have to improvise. And what I'm going to do is I got my trim gun. So what I'm going to do is just put two inch and a half nails in, in here on both sides to hopefully lock down that miter. Keep it nice and tight. One. Two. And two over here. Alright, so that's locked in pretty much, so just let that seam kind of dry for about 15-20 minutes. Wipe off the excess glue. You don't have to worry too much, it's going to dry clear. Alright, and you're good to go, and that's your seams. Alright, and once that's pretty solid, you can do the other two pieces, and then once that dries, then connect all four. And then you're good to go. Pick the whole thing up, carry it into the kitchen, and shoot it. So as I stated earlier, I don't have the Hartford clamps anymore. So I kind of do this to keep those miters locked. I'll put one clamp on one side and the other clamp actually grabs that clamp and over here. So it, it does lock it in really tight. And I did that for the other sides as well. You see, so again, you put one clamp on the inside and then this other clamp actually grabs that and then grabs the outside of the wood and just keep tightening up on the grips and it'll make that miter tight. So the window casement is outside drying right now. That's all locked and secured and glued. So all that's setting up. I figured I have um, like a cove trim to go on the inside. I'm only going to do the three sides of this window. This that one in here. I kind of like this look right here, it's clean. So for all three windows, I'm just gonna put a cove on three sides. So I'm just gonna cut a 45 degree angle for both to make that miter on all the corners and tack that in with a brad nailer. After that, I've got two bouillon strips I'm gonna put in the middle. I'm gonna prop the shindles out just, just a tad and then I'll also tack that in with a brad nailer. Put the casement on it, everything should be good. All right, so I put the cold moldings in the other two windows in the bay. I'm not gonna show you how to quickly put the cold molding in this. As I stated before, this house was built about 60 years ago. So this still sill right here, it's tight over here and it's kind of sagging down here. I tried hitting it up, it's not gonna move. So the first thing I wanna do is take this measurement right here and then I'll take the two legs. All right, so that's 20. That looks to be about 37 up there. And yeah, 37 a little heavy. All right, so I'm gonna cut this first piece. And again, we're gonna cut two 45s. All right, so that top piece was 20 inches. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put a 45 on this piece right here. My little 
trick before, put the point of this trim right on the end of your table, right there, and then I'll hook the table and I'll measure for 20. This one is right here. Alright, so now I'm going to reverse the saw to the other 45. I got my mark right on top, so I want my blade to be right on the top of that mark right there, coming down to the 45. And make your cut. So that'll be the top piece right there. 245s coming in. Alright, so we got our piece cut at 20 inches. Um, like I said, it's tight over here, the sill. A little slacking over there, so we're going to just have to work with that. So put your piece in, put it tight, and it slides up a little bit over there. So generally what I like to do is I put one brad nail directly in the middle. I'm using three quarter inch brads here. Um, this piece of wood is about a quarter inch thick, so the brads, they grab pretty tight. So I put one brad right in the middle, and you want to shoot it up, just like that. Now what I'll do is I'll cut these two pieces, and the reason I don't shoot these is because depending on what the cut is and the angle of that miter, it'll give me a little bit of play. If I put a nail in here and here, that piece is locked in. I can't pull it down, I can't pull it up, and I can't adjust that miter and make it perfectly where I want it. So, like I said, just always put that one nail right in the middle, and I'm going to go cut these two pieces. So I cut my two legs. This is the first one here on the left. So I just want to slide that up in there. And uh, went a little tight so it slides up against the sill. And that's good right there. Alright, so that's locked in nice. Take your nailer, one on top, one about halfway, one on the bottom. Make sure it's tight to the window. All right. And with that being said, you can put one brad in that corner up. Okay, so that's all locked in beautifully. So this is my right leg. I'm going to slide this up in there. Like I said, you want it kind of tight to the sill so you have a nice tight fit. Um, generally, I kind of cut it where it kind of needs to be, and then I'll trim it maybe two or three times to get it perfect. So that's what I do with this piece. So it's got just a little pressure I'm sliding up against the sill into place. And that looks good right there. Alright, so this point, put this in. One, one in the middle, sufficient. And one at the bottom. Alright, so all the trim's all set. The last thing to do is the two mullion strips. I'm going to cut them to size first. I might have to trim them out a little bit. Um, we'll see how it looks after I cut them. So let me go handle that real quick. Thirty-six and three quarters. Heavy. All right, so just quickly, when you work around a finished cabinets, I always take off my tool belt. You got all kinds of chisels, nail sets, the end of your hammer, the claw hanging out. You don't want to mar the beauty of what you already installed, right? So I got my Mouillon strip cut. Um, what I'm going to do is just start from the bottom here. And I'm just going to kind of line it up where I want it. I'll shoot at the bottom, and then I'll adjust the piece as I go up. And what I did is I upgraded to inch and a quarter brad nails in here. I'm only going to put one. Like I said, these nails hold very well. So let me shoot the first one in there, right in the middle. Okay, and just going to work my way up. One right there. Get up on top. Now you want to adjust to where you want it. Right about there. Looks good. And then just continue to nail. Again, you don't want to put too many nails in this. This is finished work.
Okay, so that Moyan strip is done. Now I'll slide over and do the one on the other side. So for this Moyan strip, I decided I'm going to put a couple of shims in here to fur that out. Um, there's quite a significant gap in between there, so I don't want it kind of floating. So I just put a shim every couple of inches and I switch back to three quarter inch brads and just to lock it in place. Just to kind of further it out a little bit, so now I'm going to switch back to inch and a quarter brads. Start from the bottom, maybe start from the top. feel for both sides so it's directly in the middle all right so that finishes off the trim job